The great Chris Carlin, the voice of Retkis football, joins us. My friend, how you been? I'm outstanding, and it was great to hear Dick Lynch's name. I did some games with Dick Lynch. He was the color analyst uh, for the Giants for a very long time uh, after uh, his NFL career, and just a, an amazing guy, as good as he, as good as could be. Passed away several years ago, but boy, it was good to hear that name again. Good man. Uh, old number twenty-two at the Giants. Does that would that be right? I think it was. I think it yeah. was number 22. Yeah. yeah. If I'm yeah. not mistaken, I think you're yeah. right. Hey, Rutgers has had um, a revolving door at quarterback. And hmm. now Gavin is the one that, that, you know, played obviously very well against Michigan State. How have you looked at the revolving door of quarterback, starting with Noah Vedral obviously getting banged up in the offseason? Well, that was the big thing. It was going to be Noah to start the year. And he got he suffered the injury in the scrimmage, and it was a hand injury. And the revolving door really came about because Evan Simon and Gavin had both played reasonably well through camp. So they wanted to play both of them. Gavin's the guy they look at as the future. You know? Right. He, he's really the guy that they're very high on. Uh, then you had Noah come back, and he wasn't fully healed yet. He could do something. So there was literally one game. I, I believe it was Iowa, but I can't remember off the top of my head, where every play you could look up and somebody different's in the game, um, yeah. just based on the situation. Because Noah, at some points, could grip the football pretty well, and at some points he couldn't. So... You know, all of that being the case, the last couple of games, it's been Gavin. They have settled on that. Noah has handled it exceptionally well. He's a guy that plans on being a coach, and so he's taking a lot out of this. And if they need him, uh, he's there to be called on for sure. But I think that, uh, you know, Gavin is just – Steve, you've been here before. You see the flashes of the young quarterback – of what he's going to be capable of. And then it's a case of tying everything else together. And the last couple of starts, I, that's exactly how I would put it. Um, last week did not turn the football over. It was, you know, it was, it, it's a big development. Um, and in some of that game, you know, you're coming back. Uh, so it, coverage is a little bit softer. And so the numbers end up looking pretty good. But at the same time, like, He's one of those guys that when people watch him, you can see it. It's just, all right, how far away are you from from being that? And I, and I don't feel like he's all that far away at this point. Chris, what about his ability to move? Because, I mean, he can run with the football. Has that helped open up a couple of alleys for other people in the offense because he can move? Yeah, it, it definitely is. I mean, we know you need the athletic quarterback at this point, right? Um, it certainly helps. It, it definitely helps. Uh, I think a big help to him last week was a breakout game for Kyle Manungai running the football. Uh, on the first play of the game, you know, this is, this is a guy who's a bowling ball type running back, and he came right through the hole and just trucked a safety. And it was wow. kind of setting, trying, really setting the tone for the game. And he ended up for 162. And I think that's something that definitely helped Gavin uh, in that respect. But Gavin's ability to run um, and and make plays with his feet, that's certainly uh, a huge attraction in his ability. And they needed that because Brown got hurt. And it looked like he had seized the running back job. And so they were really so – it sounded to me like they were hoping one of the other guys could step up. And it sounds like Kyle did. Yeah, and it's not that Kyle hadn't before. He is the most reliable guy in terms of pass protection, all the things that go into it. And he had not broken out before last week. Sam Brown was somebody that really was breaking out. North-South, very good, was getting four and five yards a clip and then the injury, right? Um, Sam was the first Rutgers running back since 2014, to get more than 25 carries in a game. He got 28 uh, a few weeks back against Indiana when he got hurt. So um, 
that was a kick in the pants, to be sure. They love him. Uh, I think he's going to be a big part of what they're going to do in the future. But I, at the same time, uh, it was good to see Kyle really break through because he's a guy that the coaching staff absolutely loves. Aaron Crookshank's now been there a couple of years, Chris. And then Sean Ryan from West Virginia has been added into the mix. What do they give uh, Rutgers at wide receiver as a one-two punch? Ryan's a guy that can go up and get it. You know, yeah. he is a big play guy from the standpoint that when you throw up the ball that we call 50-50 balls, right, you feel more like if he's going to go up at 6-4 and, and a good um, – jump he's going to have a chance to make that a 75 25 ball you know he he definitely feels like somebody that if he's not going to get it nobody's going to get it and and that i think is a an incredible trait too you know with aaron crookshank i think earlier in the year he was still um working his way back from his leg injury from last year but we have seen the explosiveness over the last few weeks um and, you know, the whole point in Aaron coming to Rutgers was to develop as a receiver because uh, yeah. he only had four career catches at Wisconsin. He's done that. He, he really has done that. He's, um, I don't know if he crossed it. I think he just crossed 100 catches for his career. Um, he's explosive. And on kick and punt returns, he's explosive. He had a oh, punt yeah. return called back a couple of weeks ago. Oh, no, he's what has, what, five returns for touchdowns in his career, four kickoffs and yeah. a punt. Yeah, not bad. Uh, Johnny Langham, I feel like I've seen him play more positions than most people, which mm-hmm. means that you have seen him play more than I have. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like he, I've seen him do a lot in person. You've seen all of it. Uh, yeah, I mean. Know, his versatility is amazing. Yeah, in 2019, in the season finale there, he was the quarterback. That was the year that Chris Ash got fired. And, you know, was running very tough and got beat up that night pretty good. Um, He still runs wildcat. He's playing a lot of tight end. He's playing a lot of H-back. He really can kind of do a lot of different things. And he's, you know, tough runner, short yardage situations. Very, very good at that. He's, and I know this is cliche, Steve, but he's just a football player. Like that's yeah, that, no, that's what that's he right. is. Yeah, and and well, well, um, what is it about cliches? Cliches are true. There's certain guys that are great athletes that are playing a sport, and there are other guys that are made for the sport. Yeah, yeah. This guy was made for the sport. That's exactly um, what it is. And you know, it's nice to have somebody like that. That even in an emergency, you could go and play him at quarterback and feel very comfortable in it. Obviously, we all know, you know, Greg at one point was here at Penn State a long time ago. Um, but then again, I've been here a long time, so I, I know Greg. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but uh, but his his deal back then was defense, special teams, yep. uh, especially secondary special teams. So I want to get to the special teams part first before I get to defense. Five block kicks. Melton's got three of them. And Corsack as a, as a punter, bringing that all together to go with what you talked about, Crookshank, about the impact that Rutgers special teams can have. It, it's it's such a big part of it, and I think his big belief in it is statistically, when you look at the games where you block a kick, it's something north of seventy eight percent that you're going to win. You know, right. when when you make that kind of a play on special teams, they blocked one for a touchdown uh, against Michigan. They were leading that game 17-14, and then Gavin struggled, three interceptions in the third quarter. Boom. You know, it gets away from you quickly. Um, but it, the, the secondary and special teams are incredibly important to him. Secondary is probably the deepest position on the team. Um, they have a lot of guys that they can run out there and who are capable of making big plays. And, you know, for Max Melton, I was asking him about, you know, he's uniquely qualified for this, and Greg has always had the idea of, I want to play starters on on some special teams units, and that's one of them. He did this with Devin McCourty. Uh, he did this with a lot yeah. of guys along the way, uh, the guys yeah. who are really special and smart athletes, and it's worked out well. Yeah, but 
Is, is Greg actually himself coaching the special teams? Because I, you know, I know there's no special teams coordinator, so I thought this might be the, a Greg thing. Uh, he's involved in some of it. Yeah, it's not strictly yeah. him. But okay, gotcha. he's involved in some of it. He, he's he got his yeah. hand in everything. You know, he's yeah. got his hand in everything, especially, <laughs> yeah. you, know, uh, they, you know, they made the change at offensive coordinator mid-year, and Nunzio Campanelli took over, who was, if you'll remember, the interim when Chris Ash yes. got fired. And, yes. uh, you know, Greg does trust Nunzio quite a bit with what they're doing offensively. They have simplified things quite a bit. How's the front seven been on defense? Very good. Uh, you know, they have probably eight, nine deep that they can go. And there are a couple of guys I think that you'll watch that have really stepped up. Number one, at linebacker, um, it's really the front six because they play five DBs. Right, uh, yes. But yep. uh, Tyreen Powell and, and Deion Jennings are two guys that had not played a ton of football at linebacker. They played – Special teams, Powell was coming along, and it was in a little bit of an area of concern at the beginning of the year, and they've been spectacular. They've yeah. really done a phenomenal job. Uh, and then the front seven, there's really good experience there, and there's a guy named Wesley Bailey. Who, yes, 23. Uh, yeah. yeah, who has come along very nicely and has made plays this year. And Aaron Lewis, who was a guy that initially enrolled at Michigan, and after a few weeks, uh, came back home to New Jersey. Boy, he's really developed into a terrific player. There was a point, Steve, about two weeks ago where, uh, and I'd have to go back and revisit it now, but Pro Football Focus had uh, two defensive linemen in the country that had a better, uh, that had a north of 80 grade um, on run and pass, just total defense. One was Will Anderson in Alabama. And the other was Aaron Lewis. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, Aaron is he, – he's really all over the field. He's a guy that for a defensive lineman, especially in the, in the interior at times, makes a lot more tackles than you expect. Don't normally talk about the punter unless he's making mistakes. Um, huh. but, Corsac, but Corsac's one of those guys you talk about. The wide variety of punts that he can deliver, what does that mean to what Rutgers wants to do? He's just so adaptable. He's a tremendous athlete, and you always have great confidence that you're going to win the field position battle because he's going to put you in, in, in that spot. I'll give you an example. A few weeks back against Indiana, they're pinned deep in their own territory, and Corsac uh, rolls out to his right. There's a guy. He's an Australian-style punter. He's Australian. There's a guy coming, gets away from him, and delivers a sidewinding 66-yard <laughs> kick. Like, like it, nothing phases uh, him. You talk yeah. to him, and he's like the coolest customer that there is. He is, he is the best I have ever seen. Um, yeah. and, and they may not always look pretty, but it's for a reason, and he knows exactly what he's doing. Finally, Chris, how do you view the game on Saturday? Listen, I, you know, the one thing Rutgers cannot afford to do is make mistakes in terms of turnovers. You know, when they're under Greg since he's come back, I think they're nine and one when they don't turn the football over. And when they do, it's much different. Um, they had played an exceptionally clean first half against Michigan, and that's why they were leading the game. Um, yeah. That's, it, they just have to play as clean football as you can because there's just – as with anybody, there's not a whole lot of margin for error in it. You know, they have to find a way to just contain the Penn State offense uh, a little bit and make a couple of plays here and there. My friend, thanks so much for the time. Look forward to seeing you on Saturday, Chris. Steve, it's always great to visit with you, my friend.